in these upcoming few minutes, I would like to introduce you my PhD topic, which is in connection with the pharmacokinetic and toxicity analysis in chemotherapeutic drugs in pediatric hematologic malignancies. So my name is Dora Cornelia Koch. I, uh, I'm a PhD student uh, of the second department of pediatrics, and I recently graduated from Semmelweis University as a medical doctor. My vision uh, is to achieve the best therapeutic response and effect uh, with the lowest possible toxicity when using chemotherapeuticals, uh, for example, by pharmacokinetic modifications. And my mission is to prevent the severe toxicity of chemotherapeuticals in uh, pediatric malignancies. So to complete my mission, uh, I have some specific goals, which are my PhD uh, topics. My uh, first topic uh, is in connection with looking through the literature and analyze data and uh, compare uh, the two different kinds of uh, administration of a frequently used chemotherapeutic agent called uh, vincristine. And uh, in uh, our second project, we want to create uh, some create new uh, strong evidence data by performing a clinical trial in connection with almost the same topic. So we want to compare two different uh, routes of administration of vincristine. So our first uh, project, as I've already mentioned, is a, meta a systematic review and meta-analysis in which we want to compare the toxicity levels and therapeutic uh, efficacy in uh, the conventional bolus injection compared to the uh, continuous infusion of vincristine in patients with malignancies. So the, uh, vincristine is a widely used chemotherapeutic agent in, uh, also in pediatric malignancies and in adult uh, malignancies also. Uh, these people or these patients, they not only have to struggle with a mortal disease, but uh, these high dose chemotherapies has a really great impact on, uh, or a really negative impact on their lives. So uh, the major of the adverse effect of this drug uh, called vincristine is neurotoxicity. We are using these agents since decades, but we still have problems with this kind of toxicity. Uh, as you see, uh, delayed nerve conduction velocity can be detected in almost every three patients, and manifest neuropathy can be uh, detected in more than 10% of the patients. Uh, for other drugs, we can find data in the literature that changing the route of the administration uh, resulted in reduced toxicity with the same effectiveness, and this was the base of our idea to uh, evaluate it in connection with other drugs. So our aim is to compare the severity of toxicity and therapeutic efficacy uh, between the different routes of administration in patients treated with vincristine. So our clinical question is, does the continuous infusion change therapeutic response and reduce the severity of toxicity compared to the conventional push injection? Uh, we want to analyze data from every uh, patient treated with uh, vincristine the intervention is the continuous infusion, the comparative group is the conventional push injection, and these are the uh, investigated outcomes. Our hypothesis is that the continuous infusion reduces the toxicity uh, in patients treated with this drug. And our implication is that may uh, other uh, route of administration come to the fore uh, to reduce the severity of toxicity of uh, this agent. We've uh, um, done our systematic search in the end of October, and we, are, we got a lot of hits uh, in connection with this topic, and uh, we are working on the uh, selection process and almost finalized it. Um, my, as I've already mentioned, we want to create strong evidence uh, data with a high quality study by performing a randomized control trial in connection with this uh, topic. So uh, we want to compare the pharmacokinetic parameters and the uh, toxicity levels uh, between the conventional push injection and, bullish, uh, and the continuous infusion of uh, vincristine. Um, the background is almost the same as uh, uh, I've already mentioned in my first project. I just want to highlight some differences uh, uh, that uh, we uh, don't have. We are lacking uh, uh, strong evidence data and high quality studies uh, in connection with the uh, administration. So uh, it could be a gap filling study uh, to perform this uh, randomized control trial. We already just have one RCT 
in connection with this uh, study, uh, in connection with this topic, sorry. And uh, our aim is to analyze pharmacokinetic differences between the routes of administrations, uh, compare the severity of adverse effects uh, between the different routes, and find some correlation between the differences of the pharmacokinetic parameters and the acute and late toxicity. So this will be a two-arm uh, randomized controlled trial. On the arm A, we want to uh, administer the drug in a three-hour long uh, infusion. And uh, on the B arm, the children will get the drug in the conventional administration type uh, as a push injection. Uh, these are the days when um, the children are getting the drug uh, regarding to the uh, recent ALL uh, protocol. And first, we want to do some pharmacokinetic measurements uh, after administering the first dose of vincristine and another uh, measurement uh, after administering the fourth dose uh, of vincristine. And we want to do some uh, electrophysiological studies uh, called electroneurography uh, on before the first administered dose of vincristine and after the fourth dose, and I will tell you why, because it will have the evaluation of our outcome. So, our clinical question is, that does the continuous infusion reduce the severity of toxicity uh, compared to the push injection? This is the PICO of our randomized control trial. So we want to uh, include newly, newly diagnosed uh, children with hematologic malignancies, uh, especially acute lymphoid leukemia and Hodgkin disease. Uh, the intervention will be the continuous infusion, the comparison, the bullish injection, and the, uh, the primary investigated outcome will be the severity of increasing induced peripheral neuropathy. And our hypothesis is that the 180 minutes long or three hour long, uh, long infusion uh, reduced the severity of adverse events uh, compared to the conventional one. Oh, sorry. So our implication is that uh, with the other type of administration, uh, we can reduce the toxicity uh, uh, in, uh, in the children treated with uh, this, uh, this drug. So our primary investigated outcome, as I've already mentioned, is the severity of increasing induced neuropathy. It, uh, it has a really uh, diverse or a really heterogeneous clinical manifestation. So uh, we, we have to objectify somehow this parameter. So we want to evaluate it uh, by performing a nerve conduction velocity, uh, measuring the nerve conduction velocity by an electroneurographic study. And uh, we have some secondary outcomes, um, like uh, the severity of hematologic toxicity, the severity of other organ toxicities, and uh, we want to evaluate the therapeutic response. Uh, in the case of acute lymphoid leukemia, it will be the day 15 and day 33 uh, minimal residual disease. And uh, in the case of Hodgkin lymphoma, it will be the interim PET CT. So this is just a quick overview about my uh, presentation. And these are the planned submission dates uh, of uh, my uh, studies. So thank you for your attention. And the key, key is not spending time, but in investing it. Thank you very much. And I'm ready for the questions. <laughs> Would you start uh, your protocol with a single site uh, exp uh, pilot yes. experiment? And later, you can involve international co-partners or any other method? We already had a sample size calculation of our RCT, but, uh, and we are discussing it to make it a multi-center study, including the first the Hungarian um, centers, centers. And pediatric oncologic centers, and after that we will see what we can do. The question is, what is the standard therapy when you, uh, besides the wink string? We can find studies in the literature in connection with preventing uh, this uh, severe neurotoxicity, but we don't have any strong evidence in connection with this uh, vitamin B and something like that, that it will help uh, or prevent the severity of the toxicity. So uh, this is why our aim is to uh, prevent it at the step zero and decide the correct uh, uh, form of the administration, and that's how we can really prevent uh, the toxicity. I think this is a perfect example what Translational Medicine Center wants to do. I mean, first actually do a meta-analysis and then connect it to that to do clinical trial when there is a gap or need. 
Now, I think this is very kind of, I mean, to me that was very striking that on the, your first search you found 28,000 or something like that, I mean, hits. And then you said in your second, when you, when you introduced your second topic, that there is only one reasonable quality RCT. So on one side there is the 28,000 and on the other side there is yes. the one single one. So what is in between? There are observational studies which suggest uh, uh, other type of administration that the toxicity is uh, lower uh, than by using the push injection. And uh, we want to, with this meta-analysis, we want to create a level of evidence that this is a great form and we want to strengthen this evidence by performing the, an RCT with, uh, with a high, uh, high quality and, and strong evidence data. Uh, my question is related to your second uh, topic. Um, as you mentioned, there is uh, already an existing RCT uh, in, the in the literature. So my question is, uh, what is the difference in that uh, RCT and your planned RCT? In the existing RCT, they are comparing the conventional push injection with a one hour long infusion. We want to compare it with a three hour long uh, infusion. This is the one difference. And the other one is uh, that uh, they evaluated the severity of um, neuropathy by uh, using a grading system called the Pediatric uh, uh, Modified uh, Peripheral Neuropathy Score. And uh, we want to uh, perform a, a clinical, so an electrophysiologic study and objectify and measure this uh, parameter, not just by a, a grading system, but in an objective way by performing this um, stu uh, yes, study. Thank you. <laughs>